Hi, this is Pete from SilverlightHowTo.com, and today we're going to be taking a look at styling a couple of sliders, uh, keeping with the Windows Media theme that we started with the glossy button in the last tutorials. We're going to be doing the sliders um, that we, you would find on Windows Media Player in the uh, volume control and also the scrubber. So, as an example, the volume control on Windows Media Player would look something like this. You'll notice that it's got the glossy button, something very similar to what we did in the last tutorial, along with an etched track kind of a look. So, um, something like this you'd find on Windows Media Player. And then down here um, is the scrubber that you'd also find um, that basically shows you where you are in the in the uh, plain playback of the media and also allows you to scrub forward and backwards. So you'll notice as you mouse over and mouse out the uh, scrubber button appears and you can drag it around and do whatever you need to do. Okay, this will probably be uh, part one of a two-part tutorial. Part one will work on creating basically the majority of the style right here for the volume control and then part two will take a look at just changing that style slightly to create the uh, scrubber control. Okay, so without further ado, let's get going. Let's switch over to Expression Blend 4, File, New Project, and we're going to call this Slider Style. And OK. And then what we're going to do here, go to the Assets, type in Slider, double click Slider, and zoom in just a little bit so that we can uh, get this control, bring it out into the middle of the canvas and drag it out. Alright, so I'm going to set a couple properties on here just so that we've got something to work with uh, when we start styling up this uh, control. The, uh, right now the maximum of this control goes from basically 0 up to 10. We're going to set a value of 5 so that this uh, slide is right in the middle. And uh, well, we're going to be playing with uh, templating some of these uh, these uh, brushes here. So the background color for the time being we're going to set to a solid fill brush and we're just going to make it a nice solid dark dark gray. And the foreground for the time being we'll set to a nice blue. Okay so we've got at least some things to work with and I think also what we'll do is add a rectangular background uh, so that we've got uh, we can start seeing some of the etching uh, that happens when we style this control. We'll take that rectangle, move it around to the back, and we'll give it somewhat of uh, some styling. I'm not going to go too crazy on this, but uh, let's give it some styling. Just make it look a little bit better than just the default colors. So, hey, that gives us something to work with right there. Okay, so right clicking on the control, hit a template, edit a copy. And we're going to call this volume slider and click OK. OK, so as we did with the glossy button, we're going to basically get rid of almost everything that we don't need here. So anything with a checkbox here is required for the control to work, those are called parts. So we're not going to mess with those, but everything else uh, we're definitely going to go and uh, delete. One of the other points to make here is that I'm not going to be styling the vertical template because right now for the media player all I need is the horizontal template. If you really feel like uh, styling that, go right ahead, and uh, but I'll leave it as a exercise for you. Okay, so basically what we've got here is a grid with the three, three parts that we're not going to touch. Um, that grid right now is bound, has template binding through to the uh, background property right here. Uh, we don't want that, so we're just going to take that, reset that, um, and right now, so uh, we don't have, we're not using the background property, but we, sh we soon will. Okay, so what I'm going to do is mostly you can either work, work with a rectangle or a border. I like working with a border because what I've found is that nine times out of ten I need a border, um, and if I've used a rectangle, it's kind of a pain. To change, so I'm basically going to use a border all the way or borders all the way through this tutorial. But uh, feel free to use rectangles if you prefer to. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to go and click on the border here. If it's not showing, just hold uh, hold down the uh, the mouse button, wait for the flyout, and select border over here. So I'm going to make sure that I'm in the horizontal template grid here, 
and double click border. So by default, it's taking this and spanning it only across one um, one of the three columns. So if you notice that this horizontal uh, grid here actually has one, two, three cells. Um, so what I'm going to do is select that, uh, where is it, the border right there, and make sure that it spans all three. So column span over here, I'm going to go three, and now it'll span all the way over to the, to the, to the right. I'm going to remove the margin right here, and now we're all the way across, which is what we want. Now we're going to start playing uh, with, we don't want to go all the way to the top and bottom of this control, so I think what we'll do is uh, give it uh, maybe a four and four, let's try that, four top and four bottom margin, that'll give us a nice size, I think that's about right, that's what we're looking for, and uh, the radius will set to four as well. Cool. So we'll take that, drag it above all these parts right here, so it falls to the back, and that's about what we're looking for. Cool. Um, and while I'm here, I may as well take this background, and I'm going to data bind, uh, sorry, template bind it to the background of the control, making it that gray color. All right. So now I'm going to take that border, copy it, paste it back up here, and I'm going to call this bottom highlight. Now on this one, um, on this one, let's take a look. We're going to remove this background. We don't need it. And the border brush itself, because it's a highlight, I'm going to crank all that up to white. Now, we don't. All we're going to be doing is the uh, bottom border here. That's all we're going to play with. So the rest of the borders, I'm going to just set to zero, and just leave the bottom border there. So you'll notice that only the bottom border is showing up here and I want to take it and just drop it down just slightly below uh, the other border giving it that edge look so down here instead of four margin I'm just going to give it a three margin and I'll just drop it right below it like that alright and obviously you don't want it white white so I think I'm going to take that the alpha value on this and just drop it down to 40 percent okay now we're going to do the same thing for a little a little inner uh, inner shadow on this edge edge tr track too. So I'm gonna take the border again, copy it, paste it, do exactly the same things I did with the highlight. And name the shadow. And on this, obviously, I'm gonna remove that background again. And the border brush, I am gonna go and uh, leave it at black for the time being. Uh, we'll play with the opacity later. And on this one. We're going to take it and just give it a little bit more of the top border this time. Drop it into the, the track like that. And um, yeah, I think that's about right. What we'd like to do is uh, play with its opacity. So let's set that to 40% as well. Let's see how it's looking. All right, let's zoom in a little bit more. I think the 40% is a little harsh. so. Let's click on that and we're going to bring that down to maybe 30% instead. All right. So control one will take us back to 100% of the control. And we can get out of there and take a look. So not bad to our etched track. And you've got that uh, good feel that it's kind of uh, got the depth to it. And in fact, I think what I'm going to do is go back to that shadow that I've just bumped it down and bump it back up to 40% just to give it a little bit more of a shadow and you'll notice it's a little bit more shadow in there cool alright let's zoom in again and now we're gonna work on the blue section or at least the colored section uh, that fills in behind uh, the uh, the slider slider button or thumb as they call it I guess in this template so edit template edit current and I'm gonna again take the border copy it paste it I'm gonna call this value move it all the way back up to just above the border and in fact I'm going to just move it right in here between the the uh, just below the shadow and now the back the uh, template binding uh, it's not going to be to the background but it's going to be to the foreground the blue color and we uh, right now it's spanning all three columns we don't want to do that we just want it to span the first two so I'm going to set that to two and away we go. 
So let's zoom in a little bit and see how we're doing for this uh, this uh, color. So not bad. It's filling pretty well. Um, I think I want to give it a little breathing room. Uh, so let's take take that value and let's play with the margins a little bit. So on the top, I'm going to give it five instead of the four. That just pushes it down, and I think we're seeing a uh, a border here which we're not interested in so let's get rid of the border too. I'm going to reset that, pull out the border and uh, let's, not, let's push this up to 5 as well and push it off the bottom. Okay, let's take a look. Kind of like that. Let's just push the uh, value as well off the left. So let's just go one off there and uh, let's play with the radius as well. Alright, cool. Let's go control 1 Let's just see what it looks like. Cool. Kind of flat though. So let's uh, duplicate that again and give it a highlight. So grab the value, copy paste. I'm going to call it value highlight. Move it up to here. And this time we're going to remove uh, move the background again give it a gradient fill this time put the highlight at the top and um, okay now we're gonna play with the opacity because obviously we want to let the uh, the background color through here so uh, this one I'll think I'll set to about 80 percent and this one I'll set to zero so it'll really let the uh, the inside uh, the, the underneath color come through and again this is the same technique we used on the glossy buttons it's pretty much just a kind of a uh, overlay um, just to give it some sort of a dimension but still allow the consumer or the control to set the underlying color so um, there you go now obviously what we've got left to, to go is the the thumb itself the thumb itself um, right now is set uh, dimensions are set here I think what we'll do is set that to 15 by 15 dimension which is more along the lines of what we're looking for um, and what we're going to do is style it to be similar we'll use the exact same styling as what we used for the glossy buttons in the past two tutorials I'm not going to go into the details of how to do this because it was uh, all covered in the last two tutorials uh, and you're welcome to go back and watch those and see how we did it so just in the interest of time uh, I've already got a, uh, a resource file that uh, has this defined. I'm just going to include it in the project and set it for this thumb. So I'm going to go over and I'm going to right click, add existing item. I've got an assets folder open. And now it's included in here. And this is basically all my predefined uh, resources that I've done before. I'm going to right click on here, edit template, apply resource. And now I've called it the volume thumb style right click it and there you go so cool so we've got the button um, like I say styled the same way as we did with the glossy button and all that's left to do now is uh, I think I'm gonna apply a uh, drop shadow to this just to give it a little dimension so I'm gonna get rid of, rid of the uh, search that I had here click on effects drop shadow effect and I'm gonna drag it right onto the uh, horizontal thumb here and there it is. A little harsh, a little off, but uh, we can play with the properties right now and fix that up. So shadow depth will knock back to about 2. And the uh, opacity will knock to about 50%-ish. And uh, let's set this to about 340 degrees or so. And now if we click off, it's looking pretty good as far as the button's concerned. Giving it a quick run, here's your Windows Media Player style volume control complete with etch track. So in the next tutorial we'll take this and convert it into the scrubber that you find on uh, Windows Media Player. So stay tuned. Thank you. Bye. If you would like more Silverlight tips, tutorials and resources, please visit us at silverlighthowto.com.